Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconan, along with Brianna Valeski. And we have Frank Lorcher on the line. He is president and CEO of Array Analytics. Frank, how are you doing this morning? Great. How are you, Joel? We're doing good. Uh, first, could, uh, you have an interesting background uh, getting into the markets. Could you just quickly give us your background and how it's translated into your current uh, career? Absolutely. I, I really come at this from the data side first. And so uh, Array Analytics works with large data sets in a number of industries and fields. And about a year ago, we wandered into the world of social data um, with our friends at StockTwits and at Twitter. And so we approached the problem from that side and got very interested in what people are out there and saying about different companies and about different tickers and put that data to work through a special Wisdom of Crowds platform and actually started to uh, trade those signals as a way of sharpening our algorithms and making a few dollars on the side of our core business. And so how long have you been trading the signals? We've been, we've been trading, actively trading these signals for the past six months. So you caught us uh, at, wow. the, at the uh, beginning of our uh, second quarter last time we spoke. And uh, we run a market neutral fund. So we sort of just try to pick our way from the, in the good from the bad. And uh, we actually did well. We, be, we beat uh, market neutral benchmark for the last six months of the year last year. So we're pretty thrilled about that. Well, Frank, you, you couldn't have picked a more difficult time to get started uh, trading and managing money uh, <laughs> with the volatility that we've had in the second half of the year. I, I know we had you on before. Let, let's talk about, you know, some of the picks that you had on the long side during that time period and whether or not you're sticking with them. Yeah, well, we had, um, we had a couple of longs we shared with you. We had a couple of shorts, and we are out of all of those positions now. Our, we're sort of fairly active traders. We're usually in things for anywhere between one to three weeks. Uh, when we were with you before, uh, you talked about tough time to be in the markets. We, uh, we were looking at um, both Matador and Natural Resources now. On the um, absolute side, of course, that we walked right into the uh, energy crunch there. But on a hedge side, those picks made money. Matador was up a little bit for us uh, that first week or two. Natural resource was kind of a wash. So that wasn't a bad place for us to be. On the short side, uh, we shared with you and your listeners two picks that morning, SodaStream and Tesla, Tesla. And those were actually great for us that day that we were on your show, so we're hoping you bring us good luck again. Um, those shorts averaged down about 6 or 7% that day, so that was, a, that was a nice combination for us. And, Frank, um, also explain to our listeners here that, okay, you take a, a position, a short position in SodaStream here, but you, at the same time, to, just to hedge against the overall market, you take a corresponding long position in an equity index, correct? We do. We hedge at the sector level. So for things like uh, SodaStream and Tesla, we'll be taking corresponding long positions in the uh, consumer products sector ETF, unless, of course, we have offsetting long positions in other particular equities we're taking. So that gets you pretty much, uh, I mean, with the way this market is, I mean, a lot of times the market can rally but maybe there's certain stocks that are still going down. Do you find, like, in the, if you were probably in the hedge, if you were in the consumer staples here, you probably made it on the soda stream, and you probably made a little money on the hedge as well. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a good day for us, of course. We like it when that happens. Uh, market neutral funds obviously don't see the kinds of uh, uh, 15 and 20% regular annualized returns. Um, some of those uh, uh, other funds have the last couple of years, but we also don't see the downside. So on a really good day, um, uh, we can hit uh, two singles off the same pitch, if you will, and it works out really well for us, like you say. Okay, and you said the short positions were the SodaStream and Tesla, correct? And uh, those That's were, correct. Those, and what do you use to hedge the Tesla? Do you use like a, an automo uh, automotive ETF? Is there no, it's, a, it's a great question. And obviously, the, you know, one of the really interesting things about hedging these days is you get all kinds of tweeners, right? I mean, how do you hedge Apple? Is it really consumer products? Is it, is it You don't hedge company? Apple. Yeah. You buy more. 
That's the way you had to. <laughs> well, well, I'll be honest with you. We were short Apple yesterday, and that worked out okay for us. Apple dropped a couple points. I think the guy that Credit Suisse didn't do us any favors by uh, issuing a new opinion. I think it'll turn around this morning. But uh, to be fully honest, we were short Apple yesterday, and it worked out okay for us. Are you still in it, or did you cover? We, we're, we're still in it. We'll hold that position a little longer. Um, I, I, I suspect... Um, uh, it'll end up being a wash for us. Those Credit Suisse guys uh, uh, weren't on our good side, but um, uh, we're, we're in it as of market open this morning, and we'll hold it a little while longer. So it, you use the information. I mean, you, you pay attention to the information from the analysts, but your trading decisions are based on the wisdom of crowds. How do you measure the wisdom of crowds? That's a great question. We, we spend a lot of time and energy doing that. There are other companies that do it, of course. We do it our own way. Um, we're interested in folks who contribute regularly to a number of different social platforms, and that can be everything from blogging on WordPress to likes and dislikes on Facebook to um, comments made on Twitter. Obviously, the emergence of the cash tag phenomenon where people use the dollar sign before the ticker on Twitter and on StockTwits, where it was uh, first created, um, has been very beneficial to us. And that gives us a very interesting source of data. And we gather that data over time and look at both at what the overall group's doing, but also what regular contributors are doing and when they change their opinions on different equities as well. Frank, this is Brianna. I wanted to know if you had any data for 2014 as a whole, like w what seemed to be the most talked about or the most mentioned on, on social media platforms. Ah, uh, we, we are doing that work. We are going to publish it shortly. I can tell you there are a number of different ways to do the analysis, but if you look just straight numbers, it's, it's not terribly surprising. Um, um, believe it or not, Apple, Joel Stock there, um, actually accounts for about 10% or even more of the Twitter traffic that we see. Other big names up there that are very active in the, on the, in the social realms, obviously, are ones that we're all very familiar with. Things like Facebook uh, is second at around 5%, and Google and a number of others come in around 2%. We're actually going to be publishing that on our blog in the next few days so uh, we can share more detail with your listeners. Well, that'd be great. We'll definitely have to keep an eye out for that. So let's talk about your current picks. What's on your radar right now? We've got a few things. Um, uh, a couple that won't be surprising to folks. We are we are short uh, Herbalife and have been for a little while. We're short candy at the moment. Um, a couple that might be uh, not quite so familiar to folks. We are short El Pollo Loco, Loco. So uh, we're hoping they go crazy and down. We're long Intel at the moment. So uh, those are some other positions that we've just recently established and we'll uh, be keeping an eye on. Will you adjust that uh, Intel position? I know they have upcoming earnings. Will you adjust it ahead of that or you just ride it out? We'll, we'll almost certainly ride it out. Uh, 99 times out of 100 we'll ride it out. We'll certainly um, uh, are monitoring our, our signals every single day. So if we see reason um, to, uh, to adjust that, we will. But for the vast majority of occasions, we'll be in these positions, um, but like we say, sort of one to three weeks. And unless we see a strong signal in the other direction, uh, we'll stay the course. And Frank, uh, you're, you're raising some money, you're marketing your product. Uh, what do you have on your radar to, to be doing that? Well, um, uh, we are in March. We'll be down at the South by Southwest Interactive Festival. There's a, um, you know, this is, field gets more and more um, uh, attention every single day. So there's a panel down there on social data and financial markets at South by Southwest Interactive. We'll be part of that with our friends uh, Howard Lindzen, who's uh, the CEO of StockTwits, and Chris Camillo, who uh, wrote a book called Laughing at Wall Street, some other folks down there. Um, and, you know, Keep making good picks and uh, uh, getting people's attention by doing so. That's our plan. And you're 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 building up. Uh, you're building raises some equity to trade this as well, right? We are. We absolutely are. So uh, uh, we will be looking to bring in equity partners, both in the basic platform, which works with private data sources as well as these kinds of public data sources. And then, not too long thereafter, we'll be, uh, of course, opening up the funds for assets. But uh, that's 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 later in the year. And how can people in our, our chat room learn more about your product or perhaps benefit from the information you're accumulating? 
Uh, the two best things they, they can do are go to our uh, blog, which is wealthof.info. You can also access it through our uh, website at array-analytics.com. Um, and then uh, follow us on, uh, on StockTwits, where we're most active, and that's where we will give each, each of our picks and uh, as well give folks the heads up when we close those positions. Okay, and uh, and why why are you better than like social media analytics or stock twits or you know what what makes you stand out from those other other uh, medians? Uh, we're really sort of the next layer of intelligence on top of those. So we think those platforms are great, and we think they're um, obviously stock twits does a great job of getting the conversation going and getting that community together and helping folks interact. Social media analytics sort of layers a, plat- a, a, a level of intelligence on top of that in terms of what's going on on a more aggregate level. We look in a little bit more detail at each of the things and um, come up with different kinds of insights than aggregate logic engines tend to do. Um, so we're certainly different, and we're good. We think we're better, and we'll be able to prove that over the course of the next year. Okay. Frank Lorcher joining us here on Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Brought to you Mark by MarketFi. He's the president and CEO of Array Analytics, and he's trying to find the wisdom in the wisdom of crowds. Frank, thanks for joining us. We enjoy the updates, and we're certainly going to have you on again soon. Great talking to you, Joe and Brianna. Have a great day, and happy trading, everybody.